Many of us already experience of having thorn in our flesh. It can be a piece of wood, metal, or commonly, we accidentally ate a piece of fish of bone. When we remember those times, we think of a somewhat irritation. We feel uncomfortable and annoyed. And for sure, we don't want that feeling, right? Same thing in our faith. There are what we call thorn in the flesh. These are the hardships, trials, persecution, problems, storm in life, name it. Kaya nga madalas, kapag nakakaranas ka ng thorn in the flesh, napapatanong ka na lang ng, Lord, why? Iba-iba yung mga thorn in the flesh natin sa buhay. But their purposes in our lives are similar. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, we will see Apostle Paul, a great man of faith, also suffered from having a thorn in his flesh. In verse 7, it says, Though I have received such wonderful revelations from God, so to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So the first purpose of every thorn in our lives is that we become more humble. Ang sabi ni Paul sa verse 7, Even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God, so to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. So tandaan mo, maging sa panahon na okay naman ang relasyon mo sa Panginoon, makakaranas ka pa rin ng pagsubok at matitinding problema. As it is written, they are given to keep us from becoming proud. Akala kasi natin, porke mga leaders na tayo, ministers, matitinding lingkod ng Diyos, eh, kaya na natin our own. Mind you, hindi tayo pagalingan at palakasan, palaliman, kapatid. So be humble. Kasi kung palakasan lang naman, si Jesus lang ang malakas. Kasi the strength of men is just a weakness of God. And our wisdom is just a foolishness of God. Know that the thorn in the flesh will give us reason to pursue God. Without them, mananatili tayong kampante sa ating pananampalataya. Worst is, lalaki ang ulo mo. Wala nang magiging reason to seek God in a deeper and intimate level. So the next purpose of every thorn in our lives is that we become more prayerful. Ang sabi ni Paul in verse 8, Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. When Apostle Paul was afflicted, he did not question and blame the Lord. Bagkus, it caused him to seek the Lord constantly and persistently. My friends, I want you to know that most of the time, God will not answer our prayers the way we want Him to. Hindi po siya genie to fulfill your wishes instantly. But, it doesn't mean na hindi ka na magpipray. Rather, all the more kang makibaka sa pananalangin, for God's will be done in your life. I believe, more than answering our prayers, God is also at work to transform us deep within us as we commune in prayer with Him and dwell in His very presence. The third one, we become more dependent on God. In verse 9, each time He said, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. Many of you will agree with me that when we are afflicted, yun yung time na mahina talaga tayo. Walang gana, vulnerable, and soft. Tama? In those moments, the Lord surely sees our pain. Kaya just like Paul, pinaglaki, pinagmalaki pa niya ang kahinaan niya. Kasi alam ni Paul, sa mga times ng kahinaan niya, doon nakikita ang paggalaw ng kapangyarihan ng Diyos sa buhay niya. Know that God's will for us when we have torn in the flesh and afflicted is for us to become dependent on Christ's power in us. Kapatid, learn to be glad and dependent sa Diyos. Whatever your pain and problems are, for Christ's power works in your weakness. And lastly, we become tougher. In verse 10, Paul said, That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses 
and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. St. Paul prayed that God will take away the thorn in his life. But God says, no, Paul. Alam mo, kung palagi na lang aalisin ng Diyos ang mga thorn in the flesh natin, or if He will not allow them, mananatili kang mahina, mababaw, sensitive, at pabebe. Hindi ka mag-grow at magmamature. Kaya ano ginagawa ni Lord? But rather, He is saying, here's my power, child. To make you stronger and overcome every thorn in the flesh. Remember, kapatid, hindi ka dinesenyo na maging stormproof. But more than that, a storm overcomer. Always remember that when God says no, it means it is better than answering your prayers with a yes. I therefore conclude na madalas, God answers our prayers na mawala yung mga struggles natin sa buhay with a no. Bakit naman, Lord? Gustong-gusto mo ata akong nakitang nahihirapan at nasasaktan? Of course not. In Hebrews chapter 4, verses 15 to 16 says, This high priest of ours pertains to Jesus. Understand our weaknesses, for he faced all of the same testings we do, yet did not sin. So let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy, and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. Alam mo, bakit madalas inaalaw ng Diyos sa buhay mo ang mga pagsubok at problema? Because without those thorn in the flesh or yung mga delubyo sa buhay mo, hindi mo may experience that God's amazing grace is sufficient for you and that His power is made perfect in everyone's weakness. Hindi aalisin ng Panginoon ang mga bagay na nagpapahirap sa atin the way we want Him to. Agus, gagamitin niya ang mga ito so that we will become more humble, more prayerful, more dependent on Him and tougher ng dahil sa kanyang biyaya at kapangyarihan. That's why remember, in every thorn of the flesh in life, you are handled with God's grace. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you for indeed you are always with us, even in the hardest time of our lives. We thank you for every thorn in the flesh that you allow in our lives for us to be more humble, more prayerful, more dependent on you, and tougher. We will gladly surrender our plans and our lives unto you, O God. Gamitin mo ang aming mga mumunting buhay to fulfill your plans for us and to fulfill your plans for the rest of us. Salamat, Panginoon. Continually, I declare strength, favor, breakthroughs, and revival in our nation, in our churches, families, and lives. We glorify you, God. We praise you. In Jesus' mighty name, hallelujah. This we pray. Amen. Good morning. Thank you for watching and have a good one.